Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bad ayyala habita fillah Continuing our study of Al-Usul Thalatha we reached the portion of the treaties where Imam Muhammad rahmatullahi where he was talking about ibadah and he said anwal ibadah alati amarallahu biha mithl al-islam wal iman wal ihsan ومن هو دعاء وخوف ورجاء وتوكل ورغبة ورهبة وخشوع وخشية وإنابة واستعانة واستعاذة واستغاثة وضبح والنظر وغير ذلك من أنواع الإبادة التي أمر الله بها كلها كلها ودليل قوله تعالى وأن المساجد لله فلا تعلم ما الله أحد. so he mentioned the various types of ibadah and then he brings evidence for the various types of ibadah that he mentions and most of the ibadah that he mentions is ibadah after mentioning islam wal iman and ihsan then he mentions things like dua meaning supplication and khawf fear and raja and hope wa tawakkal and re strict reliance or trust in allah and fear and hope and humility and a type of repentance which are all inward types of ibadah. And so it's relevant to talk a little bit about ibadah. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said about ibadah, he said, Al-ibadah ism jami' li kullu ma yuhibbu Allah wa yardahu min af'al wa laqwal al-zahir wa al-batin. Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi he said about ibadah, and this is a very uh, comprehensive uh, statement about ibadah, defining ibadah, worship. He said, it's everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from those actions and statements that are outward and inward. Letting us know that whatever pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our actions and from our deeds and from our statements is, is worship. That's what worship in Islam is. And also, Sheikh Islam mentioned, or Sheikh Islam, uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned about ta'atillah, about uh, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and for that obedience to Allah, all worship requires two conditions. That there is sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ikhlas, that the worship is strictly to Allah, not without shirk, not to show off or any other forms of shirk, and that it is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the minhaj of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those are the two conditions for our ibadah and without those conditions it is not considered uh, ibadah sahih qala shaykh al-islam ibn taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi fi majmu'a fatawa wal ibadah wa ta'a wa istiqama wa lazum sirat al-mustaqim wa nahu dhalik min al-asma' maksudaha wahid وَلَهَا أَصْلًا أَحَدُهُمَا أَلَا يُعْبَدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ الثَّانِي أَلَا يُعْبَدَ يُعْبَدُهُ إِلَّا بِمَا أَمَرَ وَشَرَعَ وَلَا يُعْبَدُهُ بِغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْأَحْوَاهِ وَظُنُّونَ وَالْبِدَعَ Very beautiful statement by Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He said in his Majmu' Al-Fatawa, he said, that worship and ta'a, obedience, and up, uprightness, or you know, being straight, and adhering to the straight path, all of that from in its various uh, ways that to describe it or uh, to refer to it as, it is all for one purpose and that is 
it is built upon these two foundations. The first of them is that not to worship except Allah, not worshiping anything or anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, Athani, the second thing, is not to worship except with what he commanded and what he legislated. And do not worship other by other than that from a person's desires or what they think is worship or from bid'ah or from innovations. That's a powerful statement by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah letting us know that Aslan that we just mentioned that you have to have a khlas lillah and that you have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever act of ibadah it is. And that it's not based upon our desires and it's not based upon just uh, on what we think is correct or what we think is sahih and so forth. And it's not based on bid'ah, in religious innovation, but in fact, it is what is mashroor. It is what is in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in accordance with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And then, and Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Fi kitab al kareem فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا." وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So whoever desires to meet his Lord, then do righteous deeds and do not associate partners in worship with your Lord, with, with, uh, with, with his Lord at all. Meaning do not worship anyone or anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is if you desire to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you truly desire to meet your Lord and do righteous deeds, letting us know that we have to sin sincerity in our ibadah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem Bala man aslama wajhu lillahi wa muhsin Faluhu ajruhu inda rabbihi Wala khawfun alayhim wala hum Yahzunun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, rather, whoever submits his face to Allah and he is one of the righteous, uh, and he does righteous deeds, he's one of the righteous ones, then for him is his reward, his reward is with his Lord. And he, and there is no, nothing for them to fear, nor are they those who are uh, depressed or sad. So that shows us that by being sincere in our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings and bless us to have ikhlas with the bat, that, that those are ingredients to not, someone who really, you haqqiq a tawheed, they really actualize full tawheed and worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and iman. They don't fear. They don't fear anything. And nor are they depressed because they know they're going to meet their Lord. And they have iman, they believe, even when things are tough, they still are able to, to keep their head up and worship Allah Azza wa Jal and realize the honor of the mu'min. And may Allah bless us to be of them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Wa man ahsanu deenim min man aslama wajuhu lillahi wa huwa muhsin wa attaba millata Ibrahim hanifa wa attakhad Allahu Ibrahim khalila. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, so who, uh, whosoever perfects his religion and submits his face to Allah, this is that sincerity, that ikhlas, and he is a muhsin, he's one of those, who, the righteous people, and he follows the milita Ibrahim, he follows the, the, the religion 
of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Hanifa, the pure Islamic monotheism. And Allah took Ibrahim as a friend. So that shows us the importance of habit fillah of being on the milita Ibrahim, which is pure Tawheed and Ta'budullah. Wahda. It's to worship Allah alone without associating any partners to Him, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And those are just some of the benefits with regards to those acts of, of worship. So all acts of worship which Allah commanded people to perform should be purely, sincerely, and exclusively for Allah. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means in the mosques are for Allah alone, so invoke not anyone along with Allah. Intending the performance of any of these acts for other than Allah is an act of disbelief and association. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was corrected from Allah Azza wa Jalla, anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala Nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.